Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum and greetings from Islamabad. It's a pleasure to be in such august company and uh, to see my good friend Mr. Khalid Rahman and also had a very good uh, discussion. Uh, listen to Dr. Ramzi also. Uh, let me just start from where he left off because he referred to Pakistan and uh, this, uh, I would call it the so called debate on recognition of Israel because I have been one of those who have opposed it uh, tooth and nail. And my basic argument was uh, two, threefold. Number one, that the Pakistan's policy on Israel has been enunciated not by any government, not by any political party, uh, not by any prime minister, but the founder of Pakistan, the great leader, Qaid Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah, even before the creation of Pakistan. Because in 1940, when we started the movement for Pakistan, there were two resolutions passed in Lahore on 23rd March 1940, which set the pace for the Pakistan freedom struggle. One was seeking self-determination for uh, the Muslims of uh, India, and the other one was self-determination for the people of Palestine. So this predates Pakistan's creation. Our Palestine policy is not linked with the OIC, the Arab League, or the Arab establishment, if you were. Uh, so that is one thing which is very clear. And Pakistan is the only non-Arab country which has taken part in two Arab-Israeli wars. In 1967 June war, Pakistani pilots flew the planes of Jordan Air Force and we shot down four Israeli planes. And uh, in 73 October war, the Ramzan war, uh, Pakistani Air Force pilots were with the Syrian Air Force and we shot down two Israeli planes. And even today, we have Palestinian pilots Palestinian cadets studying in Pakistani military institutions. So we are very clear and we also see an inextricable linkage between Palestine and Kashmir. Both are occupied territories. Both are denied the right of self-determination. Both are under the occupation of fascist regimes, which are also racist and Islamophobic. Netanyahu in Israel and Modi in India. And in both occupied territories, there is an attempt for demographic transformation of a majority into a minority. So if we weaken our position on Palestine, we are also uh, undermining our position on Kashmir. So we are very clear on that. And so, and our passports, uh, I still, I can remember from the day one has been, we can visit all countries of the world except Israel. So that uh, debate is moot. And I'm glad that this recognized Israel mantra in Pakistan is now buried deep in the debris of the destruction of Gaza on which Pakistanis have taken a very clear position. Uh, in Pakistan, there are three or four issues which are above party lines. Uh, Kashmir, Palestine, nuclear program, the China-Pakistan economic corridor. And uh, we speak with one voice on that. Now, coming to your question about diplomacy, I feel that um, Pakistan is coordinating very closely with Turkey because Turkey has taken the lead. And I would like to uh, present my compliments to the leader of Turkey, President Rajab Tayyip Erdogan. He has shown guts, he has shown vision, and uh, Pakistan has also joined hands with Turkey. Uh, Iran is also taking a strong position, but Iran is a bit isolated from the Muslim mainstream as of now. And But I'm also glad that because of the pressures of Pakistan and Turkey, Saudi Arabia has uh, come out a bit more stronger than before on the issue of Israel. Uh, as of now, Pakistan is also one of the countries which have declared that they will send humanitarian supplies uh, to Gaza, although there's a blockade in Gaza. So our strategy is, number one, lift the blockade. Number two, secession of Israeli aggression. And number three, sending humanitarian supplies. And we have added a number four aspect to that, that is that there should be trials of Israel for committing war crimes and crimes against humanity and what they have done. And this is for the first time, if I can recall, that it's a three-in-one struggle now. The policy of uh, Netanyahu, who is a corrupt fascist, who is trying to save his skin because he's facing corruption charges, uh, he's uh, losing government. Uh, there is the struggle in uh, the West Bank. Uh, what happened? Uh, they attacked Islam, uh, I would say, because uh, it was on the first of Ramadan that they cut the wires of the minarets so that Azan could not be heard. And then uh, on the Lala Kutul Qadr, they uh, hit the people who were even having offering prayers. So in the holiest of the Muslim holy shrines, they attacked the, the worshippers also. And there is a popular uprising there. There's a popular uprising and resistance in Gaza. Uh, despite the destruction, uh, we salute the people of uh, Gaza. And I would also like to salute the leadership of Hamas, 
uh, which has taken a, a very strong position because uh, even firing 3,000 plus rockets despite the Israeli planes and bombing. And today, I express condolences to, to our Palestinian brothers on the martyrdom of an, a journalist, uh, Abu Hussein, I think, of uh, the Voice of Jerusalem radio, I believe. And then the attack on um, uh, Al Jazeera at the AT was also part of that. So, and also within Israel, don't forget the demographics of Israel. Population of 9.3 million, out of which 21% are Arabs and uh, um, um, uh, Muslim, many of them Muslims also. So I feel that uh, Israel is going through a process which they have never experienced before. The threat within and the threat in the occupied territories. And they thought it would be a cakewalk. I was watching a documentary some time back. It's called The Gatekeepers. And you must see the documentary. It's about six top Israeli national security leaders, people who were head of Mossad, head of Shin Bet, how they say that this cannot go on indefinitely. This kind of repression, this kind of occupation, this kind of demographic transformation, this kind of apartheid, this kind of discrimination, which is institutionalized now. And I think that this is uh, no accident that in the elections they have produced a party called Ram uh, under Mr. Abbas, which is uh, uh, creating problems for them. So I feel that on the diplomatic front, Pakistan has to coordinate with other Muslim countries and also, I think, with Western countries also. Uh, I agree that the U.S. policy is based on hypocrisy and double standards. It's the worst kind of double standards. But there are also people like Senator Bernie Sanders. There are also other parliamentarians in the U.K., in the European Parliament, who are taking a principled position. And let us not forget that the biggest demonstration of solidarity with Palestine have not taken place in any Muslim country, but in London, in New York, in Madrid, in Paris, in Berlin. So I think the power of public opinion is there. I would like to see a more stronger strategy, one focusing on the Muslim countries, the other focusing on some of these Western countries through the parliament, and the third uh, utilizing the human rights organizations and the civil society organizations. Because after all, there is a strong voice of conscience. And even for the first time, artists in Hollywood are uh, speaking up. I was seeing this movie of uh, uh, Abby Martin. I was seeing Mr. Roger Waters yesterday also on Al Jazeera. So I think the voices are multiplying or even Mr. Clooney also. So I think that the time has come to pull our resources. Uh, it's a battle also of narratives, but it's also, a, I think, a certain moment in history where it is uh, a defining moment because this kind of situation has not been faced by Israel before. They thought it would be a cakewalk. They'll get away with impunity. And Netanyahu was expecting a walkover. But uh, he's faced so much resistance. And that resistance continues. And uh, we express full solidarity with the people of uh, Palestine because the way they are uh, facing this kind of... Uh, it is the largest concentration camp in the world today. They are besieged. And even, I'm sorry to say, countries like Egypt are not uh, playing any role in the Rafah crossing also. But despite that, in Pakistan, I have met many journalists and philanthropists. They want to contribute. He, journalists even want to go to and cover the war there in Gaza. They did it last time also. And uh, I would like to mention in Pakistan, we had hosted Mahmoud Zahar, the foreign minister of the government uh, in Hamas, which was elected in the freest election in the Middle East, according to Jimmy Carter in January 2006, when they won the elections there. And the postponement of elections by Mahmoud Abbas was a terrible mistake. I think that uh, uh, that divided the Palestinians and that also provided an opportunity for Israel to launch this blatant war of aggression because they feel that let's divide and rule, let's divide and conquer. But like all uh, colonialists, like all uh, fascists, uh, their predictions have proven wrong. And uh, uh, we are right now on the right side of history and we hope that we can take this forward. But more needs to be done a concerted strategy and I've been proposing to my government also we have called a special session of parliament also and apart from resolutions they have to be concrete doable steps uh, which we can take and we should unite the as many countries that can be united those who have recognized Israel I think they are uh, I don't have much faith in them that they will do much uh, uh, for that but those who have not and the majority have not recognized Israel I think they can be at least uh, uh, put together in a, a combination that they can speak up uh, and also do something. And uh, so far, so good, I would say, on the diplomatic front. I would have preferred more uh, uh, solid action.
but at least they are not silent they are speaking up and but they should also be more critical of the us policy which is at the heart at the core of uh, uh, this problem because they are the biggest they complicit in the crimes of israel and uh, the biden administration i mean and they are no different from the trump administration in that way and i think they realize that the israel lobby is so dominant in washington and i've been a student in washington in georgetown university i know how the lobby works so i think that americans as uh, patrick buchanan the journalist used to say israeli occupied territory is not just in the west bank and gaza it's also the american congress so but we can at least uh, shape the narrative uh, make it a battle of uh, uh, ideas and public opinion and at least uh, try to break the blockade i would uh, welcome uh, that shiploads of humanitarian goods should be going a flotilla uh, of muslim countries and try to break the blockade it will be big news it will be there i'll just give, end my statement with a short uh, example of history in 1992 93 there was the civil war in balkans bosnia and herzegovina did not exist there was ethnic cleansing of the muslims by the croats by the serbs with the backing of the west pakistan was the first country to break the arms embargo imposed by the un followed by uh, saudi arabia turkey iran and malaysia and when the americans and the west realized that this issue will become an islamic issue they intervene and then they turn the battle turn and today by the grace of almighty allah you have a muslim majority republic of Hus bosnia herzegovina in the heart of europe so i think the tables can be turned and nothing is inevitable and israel is no longer that invincible power it thought it was thank you very much and i look forward to a very fruitful discussion